tonight, developing news for men's basketball as reports say head coach Will Wade will be subpoenaed in a federal trial just two days after the Tigers' big win over Tennessee. We'll also fully break down that huge victory against the Volunteers and discuss what it fully means for LSU now and going forward this season as they prepare for postseason play. All this and more, the final score starts right now. Welcome to the final score. I'm Lily Fontenot. She's Caroline Finn. And LSU basketball has stolen all the headlines this weekend. Yeah, that's right, Lily. And LSU's win over Tennessee was a monumental one. But it was another story about the team that sent shockwaves from the program. Yahoo.com reported earlier today that Will Wade and Arizona head coach Sean Miller were notified that they will be subpoenaed in a federal trial which is focusing on corruption in college basketball, the second one of its kind in the past two years. It means that we will possibly see these two high-profile NCAA coaches testifying in federal court about the ins and outs of college hoops recruiting. And it raises some questions about what the right course of action is for Joe Oliva and the school itself. Wade was asked about it in his press conference today and kept his answer short. I just, I just saw it. I had, I had not, I've not heard anything or hadn't heard anything until I just saw it before I walked in here. I haven't been, I mean, I really haven't been following at all. Um, that closely. I've been focused on our. Um, I've been focused on our team. So today was. I learned about it, like I said, just before I walked in here. Look, we've got to focus on playing A and M, and that's. I mean, I'm, I'm focused on our team and our guys staying, staying locked in with them and helping them continue to win. The belief is that this investigation revolves around one Christian Dawkins, a former low-level agent runner, found guilty in the first corruption trial back in October. Yahoo had also reported in February of last year that Wade had drawn NCAA scrutiny for his recruiting tactics at LSU and his previous job at VCU. Athletic Director Joe Oliva said at the time that the school had, quote, no contact from the NCAA, no word from him yet on these developments, but stay with us on our website at tigertv.tv for updates on this story. Now, before the Yahoo report, the biggest basketball news was LSU's top 15 matchup against number 5 Tennessee. The PMAC was packed, and the spectacle did not disappoint. One of the biggest games in recent memory for the Tigers, a chance for a massive season-defining and possibly era-defining win for LSU. Just minutes before tip-off, news broke that the Tigers would be without star point guard Tremont Waters, something that his teammates said made them have to pick up the slack in his absence and try to fill in as his role as the offensive instigator. Tremont initiates most of our offense. Uh, he does a great job. We can't wait to get him back. Um, but we knew that we'd have to be a lot more aggressive and, and try to emulate what he does as much as possible. And, uh, you know, it worked out really well. And fill in they did most notably guards Skylar Mays and Javante Smart, who both had career nights. It was the visiting volunteers, however, who got off to a, the better start. A back-and-forth first half saw Tennessee pull away slightly at the end of the first to take a five-point lead into the break as LSU's star big man Nas Reed rode the bench after picking up two early fouls. In the second half, the Tigers got Reed back, but he was unable to get any of his shots to fall from the field. Tennessee led by as much as nine points on two different occasions after the interval but they were never able to pull away, despite some inspired play by guard Admiral Shawfield, who finished with 27 points. It was the Smart and May show for the Tigers all night, but another reason why LSU was able to stay in it was a double-double performance from big man Cavell Bigby Williams. The game went into overtime, and in the extra period, it was tied, and Tennessee had the ball with just eight seconds left. After a missed Tennessee three, Javante Smart corralled the loose ball and was fouled by Grant Williams with under a second left. They call a foul here. 80 feet from the goal. Oh, Rick Barnes got to be so upset. Which earned him two free throws to essentially win the game. Here was Tennessee head coach Rick Barnes on the final sequence. Lamonte just, uh, I think from the time he got the ball, I, I think he hadn't made up his mind he was going to stop and pull up and shoot it, which uh, really is not a good decision. But uh, And then Grant obviously just trying to make a play to rebound, and I guess they collided. I, I didn't really see it, uh, but... Uh, I guess that's what happened. Javante went to the line and downed both free throws, and LSU completed an all-time win in the PMAC, their first against a top-five team at home in over 15 years. Chaos ensued in the PMAC, and head coach Will Wade got his moment with the fans, first celebrating with the students and then with a post-game speech.
losing Trey Mott Waters so close to tip-off left LSU in the lurch game plan-wise. The Tigers, Wade said, had to change their game plan in, in a night and then had to change it again after Nas Reed's foul trouble. Overcame a lot of adversity. Um, you know, we, we had to pretty much ch flip our game plan in a night uh, on, on, on things, and so we were able to, uh, to do that, and our guys were really locked in and really focused. We, <laughs> the initial plan was to really feed Nas the ball down low, and then he gets the two fouls, and that really, that really hurt us there. So we had to kind of go to plan, plan C, I guess it would be. Reed had a poor scoring showing, finishing with just one point, but had an undeniable effect despite his ability to, inability to get his shots in. Six boards in the second half and undoubtedly garnered a lot of focus from the UT defense down the stretch as the ball found its way into his hands on every possession. The MVP of the game ultimately has to be Javante Smart. In the biggest game of his career, he put up 29 points, at one point had 11 straight, and obviously hit those clutch shots from the free throw line. Both coaches gave Smart some well-deserved props post-game. How much were you taken aback by uh, Javante's play? I mean, he hasn't been in that role basically all season. Kind of assumed the role of Tremont Waters. No, we weren't because we, we told our team, I mean, that we thought that they, we never thought they were a one-man team. So uh, I, don't, I don't think we're surprised. Like I said, I, uh, we expected him to, to have a great game because, I mean, it's probably a role he's been wanting to play himself anyway. Javante was phenomenal. I told somebody before the game, they said, what's it going to look like? I said, well, it's probably not going to be as aesthetically pleasing, but he's going to get the job done. And that, that, that's what he does. It, it, won't, it won't look as, as crisp, but he's going he's to get the job done, and, and, and he's done that for us. LSU takes on Texas A&M tomorrow night, trying to stay atop the SEC standings. When we return, we'll talk what happens on the Diamonds over the weekend. We'll be right back. Well, we've talked about the headlines coming from the basketball program, but it's time to shift our attention to the diamond as both the baseball and softball teams were in action over the weekend. LSU softball had a busy weekend hosting four teams for the LSU Invitational. Thursday, the Tigers had a tough home loss against Stanford. The defense was struggling in the latter portion of the game, allowing seven runs in the sixth inning alone. The Tigers turned coal into diamonds as the defense polished up their mistakes when they took on the Wolverines. Finally today, uh, the defense was unstoppable. I mean, every ball that was hit to them. Um, we only faced 21 batters today, which that makes it a lot easier on any pitcher. So I'm really thankful for my defense. Um, my catchers, both Nick and um, Morgan, did a great job behind the plate, helping me get the strikes called. And so it was just all around a really great team win. What? And here are some examples of LSU's most shining defensive moments. Freshman Shelby Wickersham on the mound against Michigan outfielder Thais Gonzalez, and it's an out at first base. Later on, Wolverine Lexi Blair with a pop-up, and it is snagged by LSU catcher Michaela Schlotman. That'll end that inning. And moving on in the game, Michigan Sarah Schaefer is up to the plate with a ground ball to third. Third baseman Amanda Sanchez struggles to make the play, but makes the out at first. The Tigers pulled out a 2-0 win over Michigan Friday night and went on to win the other three games the Tigers competed in this past weekend. The Tigers will host Kent State on Tuesday at 6 p.m. Right next to Tiger Park over in Alex Box, the top-ranked baseball team continued their perfect streak this weekend, sweeping Bryant in a three-game home series. In the first two games of the series, the Tigers' offense exploded, scoring a combined 30 runs. Freshman Cade Beloso and Giovanni DiGiacomo were the Tigers' spark on Friday night, leading LSU to a 13-6 win. Saturday's game was a similar story as the Tigers scored 17 runs on 14 hits to dominate the Bulldogs 17-8. However, Sunday was a different story. Even though the game was a close one, the Tigers were able to complete their sweep over Bryant thanks to an RBI from Antoine Duplantis who gave the Tigers their winning run. The final score Sunday, 4-3 LSU. The Tigers improved to 7-0 for the season, the fifth time it's happened under head coach Paul Maneri, which is a program record. Next, the Tigers host South Alabama at 6 p.m. tomorrow night. Speaking of the Duplantises, track and field star Mondo Duplantis, Antoine's little brother, broke the NCAA indoor pole vault record over the weekend. Duplantis set a new collegiate record, clearing a height of 19 feet and 5 inches, beating the former record of 19 feet and 4 and 3 fourths inches, set back in 2015 by Akron's John Farber. More Tigers making history when we come back on the final score. 
Welcome back to the show. Thanks to the Alliance of American Football, football is still in season. Former LSU starting quarterback Zach Mettenberger got his chance to start for Memphis Express Saturday night and threw the first touchdown pass in franchise history. The Express would eventually fall to the Orlando Apollos. Mettenberger went 9 of 12 for 120 yards and two TDs. Well, that's all the time we have tonight. Be sure to follow us on all social media at LSU Tiger TV and on Twitter at TTV underscore sports and check out our website, TigerTV.TV. Thanks for watching. Have a great evening, Tigers.